Greetings and salutations, comic book conversationalists from all across the Fruit of Plain, from border to border, coast to coast, and all points in between. Again, once again, this is Comic Book Hangover. My name is Scott, and we're going to do a weekly hog. It is Wednesday. It is a beautiful Wednesday out here in Michigan. We're topping up at about 80 degrees. It's beautiful weather. I'm loving it. And we're going to talk about some comic books. That's my dad in the background. And let's talk about the books that I picked up this week for my LCS. Starting with this top of the stack, a book that I picked up only because I love this cover. This is a great cover. Um, this is Marvel Voices, and this is also the first Marvel Voices I've ever picked up. These 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 Marvel Voices books they don't they don't interest me for the most part. Um, I, I I don't like the idea of of to me these books seem to be kind of like trying to divide the fans in terms of you know what they are as opposed to who who they are and and who they are are comic book fans. And I mean, I, I kind of, I understand why Marvel does them. It's just, I don't, in, in a way, it is, it, it, sometimes it just seems more divisive than not. But this one here, this is a little bit different than their usual ones, because usually like the spotlight, you know, minority characters or female characters, uh, which is great. Although I, I, I kind of wish that they would reprint older stories as well, you know, kind of give an idea of how far some of these characters have come. Because characters like Luke Cage, and Storm, they've come a long way. They've done a lot of great things. They've had some really great stories. And we, we should be spotlighting how far these characters have come. But we have Marvel Voices Spider-Verse. This they, they had multiple covers. This is the one I picked up because it spotlights Spider-Punk, one of my favorite new Spider characters, and one that is finally going to be getting his, his time in the sun in the upcoming uh, Spider-Verse, uh, Miles Morales, um, Spider-Man. I think it's across the Spider-Verse movie. I'm really excited to see him. I'm, I'm super excited to, to actually be able to share him with the people who like Spider-Man but don't know who he is. So we got Marvel Voices Spider-Verse number one, Radiant Black number 25, uh, which is, it's this is kind of a weird series. It's like when I wasn't reading it, I really missed it. But when I'm reading it, it's like there's, there's really not a whole lot of action in this book, you know? It's just a lot of talking. It's a lot of walking. There's not a whole lot of real action going on. Sorry about the sunshine. But there's not a whole lot of action that's going on in this book. But for some reason, I still want to stick with it. I still want to read it. We'll see what happens when issue 25 comes out. Because I might end up dropping it again. And if I drop it again, it'll be for the last time. I might just switch the trades. Facsimile edition. We have X-Men number one. Since there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to afford the original, I'm happy with a facsimile. Now again, I got to do this every time because... There are unscrupulous people out there that like to, like to take advantage of newer readers, newer collectors who may not be as savvy because they're new. So I want to do my part to protect them and also show them, hey, not all of us are greedy snobs. So when you see an, uh, uh, when you see something like this on eBay and it's real cheap and it's not like hundreds of thousands of dollars and trying to get like two or three thousand dollars or something like that, or a hundred, couple hundred dollars for it, it's a facsimile edition. The ways you can tell it's a facsimile edition, number one, you're going to look for the Marvel logo right there. That Marvel logo is current. That is not going to be on the original. You're also going to look at the price. The price is $3.99. When this book came out originally, it was not a $3.99 book. Also, UPC. If the UPC, actually, the original didn't have a UPC on it, first of all, as far as I can remember. No UPC. But if there's a UPC on the on the corner there that, that is hugging the spine and hugging the bottom like this, where there's no space in between, that's a facsimile, my friend. So... Keep an eye out for those three things, and you won't spend a lot of money on a book that only has a $4 cover price. Moving on. Little Monsters, number 12. Now, I know my, when that, the last one came out, I uh, had mentioned how much I am enjoying this series, but I don't know if it could sustain. Like, I can't see getting a Little Monsters, number 25, or Little Monsters, 50. Turns out, this is a 13-issue series. So, issue 12 here, this is what they call the penultimate issue. Issue 13 is going to be the last one for the run. And it's been a great run. I do recommend it. If you can find the trade paperbacks for it, I do recommend getting the trades for it. Especially if you like a vampire story that's a little bit different. And the art style is a little bit different. Moving on. Mad Balls versus Garbage Pail Kids. Slime and Slime again. Number three I picked up. I do have the variant cover for this at the LCS. This is the one I picked up today. Because I want to read that book. Barbaric. Hell to Pay. Number three. 
gray series. I, I'm seeing more and more people finally talking about this online. This is, a, this is a wildly entertaining series. I'm really loving it. It's like Conan the Barbarian if Conan had more of a personality that uh, was politically incorrect. Another, um, this is another um, uh, uh, facsimile edition. This is Batman Vengeance of Bane. Now, I had the original for this, but, you know, there was that, that, that time about a year ago that I needed to start getting some quick money, so I had to sell my original off. I'm okay with that. I got a facsimile, and I'm one of these guys, one of the rare comic book collectors, one of the rare comic book fans that it's okay. If I get a reprint, I'm happy with a reprint. If I come across the original again, I'm able to get it at a good price, I'll pick it up. But if I only have this reprint, I'm okay with having just the reprint. Uh, now, this is going to be a little bit different. I think the original actually did have the cover price on the on the front of it. This one does not have a cover price on the front. If you look at the back, right about there is a UPC with the price on it. This is cover price $6.99. But that UPC was not on the back of the original. So if you see this on eBay and it's less than $100... See if it does. I'm pretty sure that the original had the cover price on the front, but it asked for a picture of the back cover. If the back cover has a UPC on there, you're dealing with a facsimile. Do not spend $100 on that. And this last one, this is a variant cover. This is one of the Alex Ross Timeless variants. This is Fantastic Four number six. I love me some Annihilus. So I had to pick up this Annihilus cover. So that is it. Those are all the books that I picked up this week. I also grabbed Comic Shop News. I love their new format. So, cover of the week. I'm, I'm going to have to go with Marvel Voices Spider-Verse. I love this Spider-Punk cover. Now, I flipped through this, and I got to tell you, there's definitely one story in there that I am not going to read. And I think it's, I, I, I got to say, Soapbox moment here, ladies and gentlemen. Soapbox moment. All right, so one of the characters, one of the spiders in here is a spider that the, the only reason why they wanted to make him is because they wanted to have a gay Peter Parker, okay? He's got a story in this. I was flipping through this to see, you know, how, how long these stories were, how many stories were, and all this sort of stuff. And the way Marvel and DC, they like to have gay characters in their books, which I'm totally okay with. I don't care if a character's gay or not, as long as it's not the only def defining um, feature of the character, which is the problem that Marvel and DC have, is being gay is almost the only thing that some of these characters have. That said, we're going to build on that. Because I flipped through the book, and the gay Peter Parker is, you know, he's a pretty boy. And he seems to be narcissistic. He's he's all these all these um, generic stereotypes that people see gay men as being, and that is not how gay men are. Okay, yeah, a lot of them are. I know. I have I have gay friends. I've had gay friends my entire life, just about. And nobody that I've ever known is being gay. Even back in the day when I was younger and I was going to clubs with my gay friends. And you're know, going to gay clubs, going to the gay parties, all that, all that sort of stuff. I have never known gay men to act the way they do in these stories that Marvel and DC produce. And I think it's actually it it does a disservice to gay characters and it does a disservice to gay fans because gay people aren't that by and large they're not that shallow. I mean, some of them are. Yeah, I'll get, I'll grant you, some of them are. Straight people are shallow, but they're not like this all the time. Marvel, DC. You got to do better. That's all there is to it. You just got to do better. But this is still going to be my cover for the week. And my soapbox moment is done. I'm I'm glad that Marvel and, and DC are putting gay characters in. That's fine. It's whatever. We've always had them in comic books. Um, and we've had them in comic books for years. And it's, it's never been a big deal. It's only become a big deal since both publishers have decided to say, we're going to make this character gay. And that's going to be the first thing that we're going to tell you that they're a gay character. Because... We want to put certain fans in a position that if they don't like it, then that makes them homophobic. And that's that's basically you know how the game is played. I don't care. You give me a good character, like Spider-Punk. If Spider-Punk was gay, I wouldn't care. He's a sweet-ass character. That's all I care about. Um, but that said, you know, um, Marvel DC, you got to do better. You know, you, you really got to do better. Stop making generic gay characters because it's insulting. That's all I got to say about that. So that's my cover of the week. Those are my books I picked up this week. My soapbox moment is done. I hope everybody also had a great 
New Comic Book Day. It was a great, that was a big week. That was a huge week this week. I, I haven't had a stack like this. Well, I got a stack like this last week, but a lot of great books, a lot of great publishers, a lot of great stories, a lot of great creative teams. Check some stuff out. Check out something new. And we will see you guys next week with another batch of comic books. See you later.